Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here with a video for Chibitronics. Today we're continuing our video series, Chibitronics for Paper Crafters, and I'll be showing you the best ways to mail your light up cards so that they arrive in the best possible condition for your recipient. So let's get started. If you missed the intro video or any other video from this series, you can find a link in the YouTube description below. To start, I've printed out the one light circuit template four times on a piece of computer scrap paper that I've adhered to an A2 top folding card base of 110 pound cardstock. I've laid out my circuit following the template and you can find a link in the description below for a tutorial on how to use templates. I insert a brand new three volt coin battery CR2016 into the battery foam ring with the positive side facing up. When I close the battery holder, the conductive fabric tape on the positive side touches the top of the battery, completing the circuit and the LED turns on. If I insert a strip of cardstock between the top of the battery and the top of the battery holder, you will see that the circuit cannot complete as the conductive fabric tape on top of the battery holder cannot touch the positive side of the battery. No matter how hard you press, the LED sticker will not light up. But as soon as I remove the strip and close the battery holder, I can engage the circuit again and the LED sticker lights up. To complete our card, I've taken another panel of 110 pound cardstock and scored and folded it an inch from the top and added a strip of foam mounting tape to the top flap. I remove the adhesive backing from that strip and adhere it to the top of the circuit template. This panel mimics a card front you might create for your light up design. Next, I apply strips of foam mounting tape on the circuit template, making sure to not cover the battery holder or the space below the battery holder. I do not remove the adhesive backing on these strips. This allows the top panel to be flipped up for some experiments later. If you were creating a card to send, you'd likely seal the panel completely. As you can see, when I flip the top panel down, I can still press the battery holder to light up my LED. I've repeated this template process three more times and added brand new batteries to each card. I also check to make sure each circuit is working. I didn't get this on video, but before I started, I checked the voltage of all the batteries and they all measured above 3.3 volts. Next, I cut strips of black cardstock. It can be any color, I just wanted it to be easy to see here, and slide them between the top of the battery holder and the top of the battery on two of my cards. I use a long strip and fold the bottom of the strip over the front panel to make sure that it will stay in place. Again, no matter how hard I press, when the strip is in place, the LED will not light up, but it lights up immediately once the strip is removed. When you mail a light up card, you can insert a strip of cardstock between the top of the battery and the top of the battery holder to keep the LED from lighting up while in transit. Even if you've sealed the entire panel shut, as long as you don't add foam mounting tape below the battery holder, you should still be able to slide the strip in. So now I have two cards with strips and two without. I place each card in a regular card envelope. As you can see with the layers of foam tape and several layers of cardstock, it is a tight fit, but it does still fit. You can see that the cards with strips do not light up when pressed in the envelope, but the cards without strips will light up when pressed. I use ATG adhesive to seal all the envelopes shut. I'm mailing all of these cards to a friend in the New England area. I'm in Virginia, so the cards aren't traveling very far, but this should give us an idea of how they move through the mail. Two of those envelopes are placed into a bubble mailer for additional padding. One of those envelopes has a strip inside and one does not. The other two envelopes, one with a strip and one without, will be mailed as is. I have not put any special instructions for the post office on any of the envelopes. Interestingly, they all went out in the mail together on October 24th, and the one bubble mailer arrived on October 26th. The two regular envelopes arrived a day later on October 27th, and the final bubble mailer showed up on October 30th. Apparently it decided to take the scenic route. Here you can see the condition of the envelopes when they arrived to their destination. The envelopes without the bubble mailer definitely look a little worse for wear. I feel like they would look even worse if they had gone cross-country or internationally. The two in the bubble mailers pretty much look the same as when they went in. So here's a look at the bubble mailer envelope and card with no strip. It all pretty much looks perfectly intact with no weird bends or damage. 
When the flap was lifted, the battery removed. The voltage was 3.211. So with the travel, it didn't lose too much charge. The battery will be dead when the voltage hits around 2.7 or 2.8. Here's the card with no strip and just a regular envelope. You can see that the card itself has some bends and damage. Here the battery voltage is measuring 3.19. So it is a little lower than the card that traveled with the bubble mailer, but not too bad. Next we have the card with the strip that traveled in the bubble mailer. Again, this card is in pretty much perfect condition upon arrival. The voltage here is measuring 3.24 which is so far is the highest voltage, which is what we'd expect, since it's the most protected packaging and a strip to keep it from accidentally lighting up in transit. Finally, we have the card with the strip that traveled in a regular envelope. This card does not have nearly the wear and tear of the no strip regular envelope card, even though they pretty much seem to have traveled together. And the voltage here measures 3.26, which again is what we'd expect in the cards with a strip. So in conclusion, it's pretty clear that mailing a light-up card with a strip to break the circuit and a padded bubble mailer is the best way to keep the card in the best shape possible. Again, this wasn't a very far mailing as the card only had to travel about 4 or 5 states, depending on the route. If you were sending cross-country or internationally, I would imagine that the batteries in the card with no strip and a regular envelope might actually be completely drained by the time they arrive. And the card with a strip and a regular envelope would probably arrive in working order, but the condition of the card would probably not be great. When you spend the time and care creating a light-up card, make sure you mail it in a way that reflects the time and effort you put into its creation. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video in the Chibitronics for Paper Crafter series, and stay tuned for a new video next month. Be sure to subscribe to the Chibitronics YouTube channel, and follow us on social media for lots of crafty inspiration. Thanks so much for watching, have an amazing day, and happy crafting. Bye!